I've already said some of what I was planning to say um, to you, and, um, but I want to focus on one of the things that I have found um, most positive in the run-up to COP21. As Alex has said, I've spent um, nearly 25 years working in investment and uh, sometimes it's really easy to get completely overwhelmed by um, the complexity of the issues that we're facing in relation to climate change and the need for businesses and governments to act responsibly and sustainably. And um, I think it's when you're feeling a bit wallowing, I think Jeremy was talking about wallowing in the doom and gloom. It's really important to focus on those things where we're seeing change. And one of the movements that I have, um, I think has added a huge amount to the world of investment is that of Divest Invest, where Bill McKibben a few years ago took some new analysis that was done by a group called Carbon Tracker, all of whom have been working in the investment arena and um, turned it into a very, very popular movement, um, working in the first instance with students in the US to encourage them to ask their colleges to divest of fossil fuels from their endowment funds, and then most importantly, invest in alternatives. Now, um, by creating that huge noise and that um, campaign has come <coughs> over to the UK, we've had discussions at universities over here in the UK, as well as with foundations and endowment funds, um, you've actually created a much bigger space for those working in the long-term sustainable investment movement to move into. So divest, invest is the divestment bit, if you want to do that to your portfolios where you're taking out fossil fuels, is a relatively easy and relatively crude thing to do. Very crude thing to do. But um, the, the invest side is very challenging finding where you then put your money into positive solutions. But for those investment funds who think it is too crude at all to just to put a blanket divestment across a portfolio, they have had to up their game in terms of the engagement and the long-term stewardship that they have been conducting with their underlying portfolios, those companies in the portfolios that they have um, been, been investing in for the long term. So if I take one pension fund, I happen to chair the investment committee for it, it's the Environment Agency Pension Fund, we have 40,000 members in that pension fund and our liabilities, so, that, so this is the money that we will be paying to the members of the pension fund into their retirement, stretch into next century. Most of our people are working at the forefront of environmental regulation and dealing with climate change. So it absolutely makes sense that um, the staff that are working for the Environment Agency are interested in environmental <coughs> sustainability. But as trustees, we have decided that um, we want to look at climate risk from a risk perspective and we've just announced a policy for it, framing the investment strategy in a two degree scenario. But we're not divesting, we are decarbonizing, and we will focus on investing in renewables. We have uh, issued a policy statement saying that we want 15% of that portfolio, it's about three bi billion sterling, invested in the renewable sector over time. But we're decarbonising because of the risks that we see over the long term. But we still want to maintain our shareholdings in the fossil fuel companies so that we can act as long term stewards and encourage <coughs> them over time to transition into a low carbon future. So I'm just giving that as an example of how um, by focusing in one specific area, the world of investment, you can start delivering change change for the positive and bring a real focus where you can start seeing things um, improve. And I think over, over the years, um, I personally have been involved with um, very helpful 
um, discussions, engaging with the likes of Shell and BP to see how they are transitioning their business to take account of the sorts of issues we've been talking about into the long term. So I think that's all I want to say at this point, and I think, Leo, you're going to speak next. Thank you. Thanks very much.